Tom Biggest to the infirmary, Tom Biggest to the infirmary. Good morning. Welcome to the Christian Community of Immaculate Conception in Glenville, New York. Today is June 2nd. Our celebrant this morning is our pastor, Father Jerry Gingras. Today, we would like to remember in prayer those who died on this date. Anna Marie Wilson, 2002. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us now prepare our minds and hearts for prayer. Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Sisters and brothers, if you are visiting today, we welcome you always with great joy. We welcome some friends from the Louisiana who are with us today. We're happy to have all of you. And also the, our family that, at home, we welcome all of you today as we celebrate together spiritually. In our charity this morning, we are asked to pray for our sister Denise Brennan. And we pray for all those who've gone before us in death, especially those that we miss so much. 
As we come together this morning, let's take a moment to look into our hearts, admit our faults, our failings, trusting in the great promise of Jesus that he forgives our sins and gives us life eternal. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. Grief stricken in spirit, I, Tobit, groaned and wept aloud. Then with sobs I began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You are the judge of the world. And now, O God, may you be mindful of me and look with favor upon me. Punish me not for my sins, not for my inadvertent offenses, nor for those of my ancestors. We sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments, so you handed us over to plundering, exile, and death, till you made us the talk and reproach of all the nations among whom you had dispersed us. Yes, your judgments are many and true in dealing with me and my sins, and those of my ancestors deserve. For we have not kept your commandments, nor have we trodden the paths of truth before you. So now deal with me as you please, and command my life breath to be taken from me, that I may go from the face of the earth into dust." It is better for me to die than to live, because I have heard insulting remarks and I am overwhelmed with grief. Lord, command me to be delivered from such anguish. Let me go to the everlasting abode. Lord, refuse me not, for it is better for me to die than to endure so much misery in life and to bear these insults. On the same day at Ecbatana in Medea, it so happened that Raguel's daughter Sarah also had to listen to abuse from one of her father's maids, for she had been married to seven husbands, but the wicked demon Asmodeus killed them off before they could have intercourse with her as it is prescribed for wives. So the maid said to her, you are the one who strangles your husband? Look at you. You have already been married seven times, but you have had no joy with any of your husbands. Why do you beat us? Is it on account of your seven husbands? Because they are dead. May we never see a son or daughter of yours? The girl was deeply saddened that day, and she went into an upper chamber of her house where she planned to hang herself. But she reconsidered, saying to herself, No, people would level this insult against my father. You had only one beloved daughter, but she hanged herself because of ill fortune. And thus would I cause my father in his old age 
to go down to the netherworld laden with sorrow. It is far better for me not to hang myself, but to beg the Lord to have me die, so that I need no longer live to hear such insults. At that time, then, she spread out her hands and facing the window, poured out her prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. At that very time, the prayer of these two suppliants was heard in the glorious presence of Almighty God. So Raphael was sent to heal them both to remove the cataracts from Tibet's, Tobit's eyes so that he might again see God's sunlight and to marry Raguel's daughter to Tobit's son, Tobiah, and then drive the wicked demon Asmodeus from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, our response is, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you, O Lord, I lift my up my soul. In you I trust. Let me not put, be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. No one who waits for you shall be put to shame. Those shall be put to shame who need break faith. To, to you, O Lord, Lord, I lift, I lift up my soul. soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your spirit and teach me, for you are God my Savior. To, to you, you, O Lord, Lord I, lift I lift up my soul. soul. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, in your kindness are from old. In your kindness, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the ways. He guides the humble in justice. He teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. 
Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and likewise the third. And the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. And Jesus said to them, You are not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> There's that old joke, a man was asked about being in heaven and about would he have his wife. And he says, I don't care whose wife she is, as long as she's not mine. <laughs> but you know, it's interesting, and in this, the story today is really, again, a setup of the Sadducees to Jesus, trying to put him in his place and trying to make him look like he's mistaken that he's saying the wrong things about the resurrection because they don't believe in the resurrection. And yet Jesus is quite clear that, you know, it's because you don't know the scriptures, because Jesus is probably making a reference to the book of wisdom, the book of wisdom, which a uh, wonderful reading from there we use often at our funeral says that the souls of the just are in the hands of God and no torment can touch them. The souls of the just are alive, very much alive with God. Now the question about will we be with our spouses, will we be with our significant others, that's not really for us to answer or even to know, but we do know that things are different in the new life. Things are not like they are on earth because we are so limited in our vision, yet heaven is so much more. The relationships that we hold on earth are transformed into even greater love, a love for all, a love for God. So today, it's, we, we really celebrate the, the gift of life, the gift of human life, which Jesus promises us will be transformed, will be resurrected, and will go on forever in the kingdom of God for those who love him. So today we're not questioning whose partner we're going to be, who we're going to know. That's not important. What's important is that we are with God. And God will give us those people in this life, will give them to us again, probably in a whole new and wonderful way. So the readings today are so encouraging, especially for those of you who've lost your significant others or your loved ones that God will join us again in the greatest love possible. The souls of the just are in the hands of God. Think about that today. And now with confidence, we turn our attention to our needs and we place them before our God. For our church, for our Holy Father Francis, for our Bishop Edward, and for all those who guide us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our civil officials, that they may be men and women of peace, justice, and the love of all life. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for those who have asked for our prayers, for the broken, the lonely, those who need support. And in our prayers say, especially remember Mr. Yeager, who has undergone some serious surgery yesterday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military personnel and for our first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers, especially in the Midwest, who are suffering from such great drought, that if possible, God would send rain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church might be blessed with more vocations to priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's take a moment to add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, hear the prayers of your people who gather here in great faith. Answer our prayers for which we make them in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be found pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God our Father. For our good, good of all God's holy church. 
Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the morning dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, all those who served the church. Remember your servant Denise, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. <clears throat> Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. <clears throat> Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her devoted spouse, <clears throat> with 
the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. <coughs> and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from you. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, <clears throat> the power, and the glory, glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <clears throat> Diane Biggis, if you could assist us this morning. My sisters and brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not <clears throat> that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. Our prayer of spiritual communion. I wish my Lord to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints.
A little tickle in my throat this morning. I apologize for that. Bill Heilman, who sits in the first seat as you walk into the church, sits there all the time on Sunday with his family, uh, is moving to uh, Michigan. So, Bill, we don't, in case we don't see you, we wish you all blessings and you and your family. You'll be with your children out there. So, congratulations. Good for you. We'll miss you. Thank you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Governed by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those who feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. Enjoy your day. Yeah.